How long does it take you to read one of the cozy mysteries from Penguin's Berkeley Prime Crime and Obsidian? If you read one a day, the publisher has enough mysteries to provide almost half your reading for February. And there are a few Valentine mysteries among these 13 titles. Avery Ames kicks off the list with her latest cheese shop mystery, As Gouda as Dead. Providence, Ohio is celebrating Valentine's Day with week-long events. And cheese shop owner Charlotte Bassett is celebrating by walking down the aisle with the man of her dreams, Jordan Pace. But when Jordan thinks they should reschedule after a murder victim is found on his farm, he doesn't realize the killer crossed the wrong woman. No one is ruining Charlotte's wedding plans. Played by the book is the latest novel idea mystery by Lucy Arlington. Everyone's excited when popular TV host Damian York returns to Inspiration Valley to launch his new gardening book. Literary, literary agent and amateur sleuth Lila Wilkins isn't as excited when she sees her mounting to-do list. And her list only gets longer when she finds a skull buried in her flower beds. Then other local secrets are dug up and a murder leads Lila to sift through those secrets to find a killer. This Old Homicide is the second fixer-upper mystery by Kate Carlisle. Not everyone in Lighthouse Cove, California is feeling the love as Valentine's Day approaches. When her elderly neighbor, Jesse Hennessy, doesn't appear at the local diner, contractor Shannon Hammer swings by his house. Jesse's dead, apparently of a heart attack but his house has also been ransacked. When another victim turns up dead, the amateur sleuth determines to find a killer before someone else gets nailed. If you like Elizabethan mysteries, you might want to try Amanda Carmack's Murder in the Queen's Garden. Kate Haywood, Queen Elizabeth's personal musician, temporarily gives up music to investigate when a skeleton is found in the Queen's Garden. When a second murder occurs, and both are connected with the Queen's astrologer, Dr. John D., Kate suspects someone is threatening the young Queen's seat on the throne. There's already conflict between the newlyweds in Kate Collins' new flower shop mystery, A Rude Awakening. It all starts with picking a house. Marco wants a fixer-upper, and Abby doesn't. The conflict really erupts, though, when they're checking out a house and watch a construction worker fall to his death. While Marco investigates on behalf of the widow, Abby keeps her investigation a secret. She just wants to finish her investigation into the house's inhabitants before Marco finds out and her case blooms into a disaster. I love the Irish setting of Sheila Connolly's County Cork Mysteries. Mara Donovan now owns an Irish pub and hopes that bringing in Irish musicians will keep the pub going after the tourist season ends. Pick up Connolly's latest, An Early Wake, to follow Mora as she looks for a killer who leaves a dead musician in the back room of her pub. J.J. Cook's new biscuit bowl food truck mystery is Fry Another Day. When Zoe Chase, a southern food truck owner, enters the biscuit bowl in a food truck race in Charlotte, North Carolina. She's accompanied by a few friends, including her handsome attorney, Miguel. Even after another food trucker is found dead, the race rolls on. But as the body count rises, the police begin to suspect Miguel. Now Zoe is involved in two races, and the more important one is to catch the real killer. Berkeley Prime Crime is releasing two of Monica Ferris's Needlecraft Mysteries, the paperback of The Drowning Spool and the hardcover Darned If You Do. In The Drowning Spool, Betsy Devonshire untangles a snarl of romantic entanglements as she looks for the killer who left a young woman floating in the therapy pool at a senior complex. In Darned If You Do, Betsy and other locals help to clean up when a tree falls on a recluse's house. But when the man is murdered in his hospital bed, Betsy must sort through the piles of stuff in his house, hoping to find answers. 
I can't wait to read the first book in Evil Gates's Lighthouse Library Mystery Series, by book or by crook. After 10 years at Harvard Library, the end of a boring relationship sends Lucy to the Outer Banks. Lucy is thrilled to land a librarian job at the Lighthouse Library on Bodie Island. But the theft of a priceless book and murder of a board member ensnares Lucy in a real-life mystery. Local farmer Candy Holliday is also the amateur sleuth in B.B. Haywood's Town in a Sweet Pickle. Candy arranges a cooking event for the local newspaper, but when a popular cookbook author and guest judge almost consumes a poisoned pickle, she suspects someone is trying to kill her. When jars of poisoned pickles pop up around town and Candy finds herself in the list of suspects, she has to track down a killer to preserve her good name. From Pickles, we move to License to Dill by Mary Ellen Hughes. It's a pickled and preserved mystery. Piper Lamb moved to Cloverdale to open a shop selling pickles and preserves. But when her dill supplier comes under suspicion of murder, Piper wants to clear his name and find out who relished killing the victim. Jen McKinley concludes the February books with her new hat shop mystery, At the Drop of a Hat. Cousins Scarlett Parker and Vivian Tremont are delighted to welcome a new customer to their London hat shop. Ariana Jackson wants her mother's bridal hat and veil restored, one that had been made by Scarlett and Vivian's grandmother years earlier. But when the bride ends up in custody, suspected of killing her boss, the two cousins are determined to find the real killer. The February books are filled with food, a little romance, and murder. A perfect month from Penguin's Berkeley Prime Crime and Obsidian. Enjoy!